Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, our today's topic is intraspecific interactions. As you know, intraspecific interactions are those interactions in which the members of the same species are involved. These interactions can be cooperative or competitive. As the name suggests, cooperative interactions are such interactions in which the members involved would they help each other or they cooperate with each other. There are many examples of cooperative interaction or cooperative intraspecific interactions like mating. What is mating? The pairing of male and female individuals for the purpose of reproduction. This we call as mating. There are some other names for it like cohabitation, copulation, achitis. A cooperation occurs that's external. Before mating, courtships, that the courtship period occurs in some birds and mammals. It has also been seen in some plants. So far as the parental care is concerned, it involves care of eggs as well as care of young ones. The protection and food for young ones occurs in both plants as well as animals. A number of interactions can be seen. If we talk about care of eggs, some animals like earthworm and cockroach. They lay eggs in protective egg coverings known as othike and pay no other further attention to the offspring. Certain animals like cyclops and prawn, females carry their eggs till it's hatched. In cat and fish, Seahorse, these functions are carried by males. Some animals prepare specific nest and incubate the eggs. Rather, these things can be performed by male or female. You might have heard the eggs of cuckoo are laid in the nests of crow. In most of the cases of birds, both the parents perform parental care. Among peacocks, it has been seen only the mother incubates the eggs and cares for the youngs. So far as the care of young ones is concerned, the young ones may or may not need the parental care. Some young ones are fed by their parents in the nests for a long time, like birds, in the offsprings of cats, dogs, they are also helpless, they are fed by their parents and are not independent. There is one more type of cooperative interaction that is family formation. Some animals are isolated. Their opposite sexes come in contact only and there is a mating period. The examples of spiders or insects can be considered. The animals such as wolf, foxes, they are monogamous. They do not change their partner. Their family resembles a human family which involves an adult male, adult female, and an offspring. The group formation is also known as aggregation. There are some animals which occur in the group. This also occurs when there is a mating period. They occur in herds and flocks. 
Animals also form groups during migration and hibernation. Like in birds and snakes. The permanent groupings of fishes, known as shoals. Similarly, locusts, they occur in swarms. Monkeys and apes live in troops. The herds of elephants, lions and zebras. Similarly, there are flocks, sheep, goat, etc. There is one more interaction. A cooperative interaction that is known as altruism. It's a kind of cooperative intraspecific interaction in which an individual called altruist increases the chances of survival of other individuals of the same species by a sacrificial behavior. It sacrifices itself. For example, it has been seen in a herd of spotted deer. The weak and the old members, they surround the stake having the best antlers when the herd is attacked by a predatory animal. Thus they present themselves for sacrifice. Similarly, in a bee colony, the workers sacrifice their lives to protect the queen. Such behavior has also been seen in white ants and termites. In the previous lecture, we discussed territoriality. An individual occupies a particular region for food, shelter and mate. That particular area is known as territory and this is protected by an individual or a, or a group of individuals. The boundary may be even marked with urine, faces or other secretions. Like we discussed the territoriality of dog in the previous lecture. Dogs delimit a surrounding territory in connection with the place where they inhabit using emissions of urine that has an odor detectable by other dogs.